I'm very, very happy and really honored, just want you to know, honored to have James Jones here. He's from Alberta, Canada, and he's Cree. And he has been uh, sharing with us his dance, his history, his stories for yesterday, and he'll have another performance later today at two o'clock. So you can catch one more performance. Um, he's from the Tall Cree Reservation in Northern Alberta. He's one of the first people that I know of that really started incorporating traditional music with modern music, hip hop, taking his culture and creating a new uh, form of presenting, uh, presenting uh, dance. So let's give a big hand to James Jones. We're happy to have him here. Thank you. How is everybody doing today? <laughs> awesome. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is James Jones. I am from, uh, like Sean was saying, I am Cree from uh, Northern Alberta, Canada. Uh, and the thing about the Cree is uh, we actually have our, uh, our own name for ourselves. That, that name was given to us uh, by the French. And uh, we have our own name. We call ourselves the Nachiel. Can you guys say Nachiel? Nachiel. And uh, what that means is the people of four directions. And um, the reason we call ourselves that is because where we're located, you know, we had um, various trade routes with many different uh, First Nations and just uh, contacts with people from all directions. So we call ourselves the, uh, the Nahiao, people of the four directions. Um, so yeah, uh, my name is, um, uh, well, I already told you my name, James Jones, <laughs> a few times. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off the uh, performance with a, uh, a little bit of a flute song. And uh, this is something that has been kind of passed on to me and shown to me uh, a number of years ago by a good friend of mine who's uh, from the Tas Pablo tribe. And what I was told about the flute is uh, this was actually a, a gift that was uh, given to our people um, from the Southerners um, um, probably over three, maybe four, even 400 years ago. Um, this, this object has been around. And what it's been used for over time is to, you know, share stories, um, you know, share teachings with one another. Uh, and, and one of the biggest things it was used for was courtship a long time ago. And it was a lot harder back then, many years ago, to, uh, uh, you know, to court somebody, to, to get somebody interested in you. I know nowadays you got things like Snapchat and Facebook and Instagram. And if you like somebody, you could just like, send them a little poke on there and stuff like that or, you know, but... Uh, these days, um, back then, what you had to do is, is you, would, um, you would offer somebody a song or you would offer somebody a dance or, or, or gift them something in order to hopes that they would, uh, uh, you know, maybe get their attention. And um, one of the things I was told about the flute is it, it was really used for, for a lot of courtship ideas and, and gifts um, to one another like that. So I'm going to share a little bit of a song with you guys and, uh, you know... Hopefully you don't fall in love with me, but uh, if you do, <laughs> then it's okay. All right. Thank you. So um, a little bit about me is that um, surprisingly, I don't always dress like this. <laughs> a lot of people think that I do full time, uh, and I don't. Uh, and one of the things too is, you know, nowadays when I meet people, you know, this is my full time job. so. I guess I do kind of always dress like this <laughs> when I'm out and about, but 
um, you know, one of the things people think about me is that I am, uh, I was raised with tradition. A lot of people, you know, when they see me dancing these days or they see me in ceremony these days, they think that I was raised like that. They think that I grew up, um, you know, in, 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 enriched in this kind of, you know, culture and practice. And, um, you know, that's, that couldn't be the furthest thing from the truth. Um, one of the things a lot of people don't know, especially about the uh, First Nations people in, in Canada, you know, I can't speak for, you know, the indigenous people in, in the U.S., but in Canada, um, we have a lot of communities that were really heavily affected by um, the residential school era. And for those of you who don't know about that, um, during the, you know, 60s, 70s, and 80s, um, a lot of uh, First Nations uh, youth were removed from their houses and put into boarding schools. Uh, and in those boarding schools, what happened was um, we, we were actually banned from, um, you know, speaking our language. We were not allowed to dance. We were not allowed to sing. Um, and uh, we had to cut our hair. Uh, and this is something that happened to thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of, of, of youth around, um, around Canada. And um, so, you know, a lot of our communities these days um, uh, come from, you know, places that are, that are not fluent in, in speaking their language, you know, uh, they're not fluent with uh, their cultural practices and those kind of things. And uh, my community was one of those communities. So, you know, I never grew up speaking my language, you know, I never grew up, um, you know, dancing or singing or anything like that. Um, I, I, you know, I grew up uh, in the inner city of, uh, of, a, of a city called Edmonton, Alberta. And, you know, it wasn't until my, my teenage years where I had to relearn my culture. And that's what we're doing these days is we're kind of re-indigenizing, you know, a lot of these communities that have lost um, their, their language and you know, their practices. They're, they're re-indigenizing and relearning a lot of these, these things and these ways that were kind of, um, you know, taken away from us. So, and uh, funny enough for myself, uh, I didn't start out as, as, as a hoop dancer or, um, or, or a singer or anything like that. The very, very first art form that I ever learned was break dancing. <laughs> when I was 12 years old, uh, when I was 11 or 12, I, I moved to the city and uh, I met a group of break dancers. And yeah, I did that for a few years and it was awesome. You know, I got to travel and learn a lot of cool things. And it wasn't until I was in my, my, my mid teens, like 15, 16, is where I started taking those, that break dancing um, uh, motivation. And I wanted to learn my own culture dance, my own cultural dances. I wanted to learn my own cultural songs. So I, I, I kind of, you know, transformed what I learned from my break dancing and I put it into my cultural dancing. And, um, you know, I kind of blended those two together when I started, which uh, kind of gave me a little bit of a leg up, but it, 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 it allowed me to express myself um, the best way that I could. So I always keep that in mind though you know I always keep that that, that foundation um, you know of where I came from um, you know before uh, I started doing any of this stuff so I'm gonna share a little bit of that history with you guys right now um, you know I'm not 16 anymore but I can still do it a little bit so <laughs> I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try um, to, to uh, show you a little bit of that history of where I come from as a uh, street dancer And in street dancing and, and kind of hip-hop b-boy culture, we have a thing where we go like this. So when I do that, that means you clap with me, all right? <laughs> Now that's not as easy as it used to be, <laughs> but I still got it. <laughs> so that's a little bit of history of uh, kind of where I started out, you know, as an artist and as a dancer. And then um, I transitioned to power dancing uh, when I was about 15, 16. I became a, a men's fancy dancer. 
And then in my early 20s is where I transitioned over to traditional hoop dancing. And you can see my hoops right there. And, you know, once I started hoop dancing, uh, I really got a lot of amazing opportunities to do with this dance. Um, I joined a group a few years back. I don't know if you guys ever heard of them called um, a Tribe Called Red, but it's a electronic. Oh, she heard of them. All right. <laughs> They're uh, basically an electronic group um, that mixes um, powwow, indigenous powwow, uh, drumming, and, and singing with uh, electronic music, and it's it's the the song that I was, uh, that I was uh, just dancing to, that kind of stuff. And yeah, we went all over the world with it. We, we, we traveled all over the world, went to festivals and events all over the place. And uh, it was really an amazing thing. But the hoop dance, um, you know, and it's done, it's done in a lot of different events and places these days, but uh, it's a very, very old dance. This dance dates back to almost, you know, uh, three, 400 years ago. And originally this dance was done in a healing ceremony. So it was done um, in, in a healing practice. And uh, what would happen is uh, people you know, who were going through uh, inner turmoil, uh, people who had experienced you know, loss of a family member or uh, were going through a tough time just in life in general, um, what would happen is, is, is they would have a ceremony for these people. And hoop dancers in the community would come and they would dance uh, for these people who are sick, they would dance for the people who, who, who need their, their spirits to be lifted. Um, and, you know, often what would happen is uh, the hoop dancers would dance and they would be telling their story with the hoops, but the people who were watching the dance also became a part of the story because, you know, they were, they, they, they were using their, their visual power and, and, you know, seeing the things that they needed to see within the hoops. So... Um, it, it, and it's it's really a, a thing, you know. When I'm dancing, like it's my energy is is on the floor, but your your energy is also with me. So you got to put those two energies together. And you know, these hoops were were are, are, are the ones that I'm using now um, are a little bit different than the hoops they used to use a long time ago. Uh, back in the day, um, you know, they were harvested in a very very sacred way. Uh, what would happen is you'd go out and you would. Um, uh, harvest red willows. So you would use red willow and uh, you would bring the red willow back. Uh, you would skin them and then you would soak them for four days. And then after you soak them for four days, you'd put them in the sun um, and then you would tie them together with animal sinew, you know. And um, yeah, so uh, they were harvested in a very, very sacred way. And uh, these are also harvested in a very sacred way from a very sacred place called Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> It's very sacred in indigenous country. <laughs> but uh, now the, the, the reason why we use, uh, most hoop dancers today will use uh, plastic hoops um, is because you know, the hoop has evolutionized over time and it's, you know, um, the moves are a lot more uh, strenuous on the, on the hoops. So a lot of those old hoops you know, made of wood would break uh, doing the moves that we do today. But we still keep that, you know, we still keep the foundation in mind. We still keep that healing um, ceremony in mind when we're dancing. And uh, each hoop, you know, most hoop dancers, when they, when they start out, they, they start with five. Because five is to honor that old way, you know. Hoop dancers um, originally danced with five hoops. And each hoop represents uh, a different energy. You know, the first hoop represents your body. When you're dancing with two hoops, that represents your mind. When you're dancing with three, that represents your spirit. And when you pick up your fourth hoop, that represents your ancestors. And when you pick up your fifth hoop, that's just putting all those elements together with your mind, your body, and your spirit. And you're putting those all together uh, and using those energies. So, um, yeah, each hoop represents something different. So, I hope you guys enjoy the hoop dance. I'm going to um, just set these up here. And keep in mind, this is also like an, a dance. You know, it, it is a dance, and it, it, I do keep the, those foundations in mind, you know, with, with the healing and that kind of stuff. But uh, I'm also a full-time performer, so, uh, you know, I also feed off of your energy. So if you, if, you, if you see something you like or, you know, you see a, a really cool object or something that looks something familiar, you know, feel free to shout it out um, and feel free to make some noise if you guys, uh, if you guys want. So 
Thank you very much. This is the Hoop Dance. So uh, that was a little bit of my story 
with the hoops and with the hoop dance. I um, hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, one thing I want to say, you know, one thing that was passed on to me um, years ago that really helped me move forward was, uh, you know, one of my elders told me that, you know, in your travels, you're going to meet a lot of different people. You're going to meet people from all different nations. And just like me, me and many people in here, we're from different nations, you know? We're from different places. And even though my beliefs might be different than your beliefs, you know, you're gonna meet people in life where you guys have different beliefs. You guys might pray to different people. You might be from different areas. Your skin might look different. You know, a wall might be separating you, a border. You're going to meet all these people in life, my elder, my elder said, from all different tribes. But one thing that we cannot forget is that even though we're from different tribes, we all come from the exact same tribe, and that's the two-legged tribe. And it's true. We're all part of the two-legged tribe, and we're all stuck here on earth together. So we're going to have to work together and live together and learn together and educate one another. And with all the crazy stuff happening in the world right now, I feel like now is a really good time to remember that, that we all come from the two-legged tribe. And the only way we're gonna move forward into the future is together. So thank you all for uh, watching my show and coming. Please don't leave, because there's another amazing, amazing, amazing um, speaker coming up next who has some amazing uh, knowledge and, and gifts to share with you. Um, one thing I will say before I go though is uh, in our language, we don't have a word for goodbye because we believe that everybody we meet in this lifetime, we're gonna see them again. So uh, we say, exe. Can you guys say exe? Which means, see you later. <laughs> Thank you very much everybody. Get another big okay. everybody give a big big applause for this isn't it amazing his dancing was special today thanks